Hey guys, what is up? As you can see, I have a little problem with buying cages for my cameras. <laughs> but if you're in the market for a cage for your a7 IV or a7S III, you're in luck because I've done all the testing for you so you don't end up like me. All right, so in the past, my goal was to find the one and done solution that would work for all shooting scenarios. But through all my years of testing, I've come to accept the fact that this just doesn't exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present which cages I think are good options in four general categories, which I've broken down into run and gun or handheld, gimbal work, locked off shots, and photography. So for the run and gun category, I have two cages for you. First, the small rig 3667 full cage. It has most of the features that have become standard on most small rig cages like a ton of quarter 20 threaded holes on all sides, 3 8 RE mounting points, a cold shoe mount, strap slots, and a magnetic tool holder. Those things are fantastic, but it's the more innovative things that I want to draw attention to. For one, the cage is compatible with the A7S III, the Alpha 1, the A7 IV, just to name a few. All you have to do is swap out this little adapter when switching between cameras. The adapter is also nice because it adds another anchor point to your camera, which helps with rigidity and takes some strain off of the single mounting point on the bottom of the camera. Next, Small Rig has been including this little swing out door on their cages and I think it's a great solution because it allows the camera's battery door to fully swing open while still keeping a nice smooth surface when it's closed for a comfortable grip. There is an integrated NATO rail on the left side and it has these little slots which are actually anti-twist slots for when you attach an HDMI cable clamp. Lastly, and probably my favorite thing about this cage is the base plate. Not only is the base plate ArcoSwiss compatible, but it also works with the DJI RS2 and RSC2 mounting plates. And while we're on the subject of DJI gimbals, they also include quarter inch holes on the bottom specifically designed to mount the stock DJI plate if you really want to use that one instead. The next cage I have in the run and gun category is something that Ulanzi sent me. This is the Ulanzi CA7M4 full cage. This cage is very similar to the previous small rig cage in many ways. It has tons of quarter 20 threaded holes on all sides. It has an Arca Swiss compatible base plate. It has strap slots on the right side and it has a magnetic tool holder on the bottom. But that is where the similarities end. The Ulanzi cage has two cold shoe mounts and it has this very unique modular design. It might be hard to tell in the camera, but this cage is actually four separate pieces. It's comprised of the base plate, the two sides and the top plate. This is interesting because I can imagine some people wanting to convert their camera from a more video centric setup to a more photo centric setup by removing the sides and top plate. Some things to note about this cage. It is marketed as being for the a7 IV, but I did try it in my a7S III and it did fit. It was a little snug, but it fit. I do have to put a little disclaimer out there though and say that if you do buy this cage for your a7S III, use at your own risk because Ulanzi does not market this cage for the a7S III. I just tried it out of my own curiosity. Also notice that this cage does not have that secondary anchor point that most small rig cages have now. I thought that this was going to be an instant deal breaker for me, but I'm pretty happy to report that I haven't had any issues with excessive flexing or the cage coming loose. Of course, if anything changes as I use this cage more, I'll leave a post in the comments down below to update you guys. All right, on to the gimbal category. There are three players in this category. The first is the small rig 3667 that we already talked about. As I previously mentioned, this cage is fully compatible with the DJI RS2 and RSC2 mounting plates right out of the box, but it's not a perfect system. As you can see, because of this grip area, you can't slide the camera on from the tilt motor side of the gimbal. There's just not enough space. So what you have to do is you actually have to remove this plate and then attach it to the camera and then put that whole assembly back on, which it's not too bad, but it is extra work. And what it means is that I can't just rem remove my camera, put it on a tripod and then come back to the gimbal and expect to be perfectly balanced. 
I'm gonna have to do some amount of rebalancing when I do that. Now, if that sounds like too much work, but you still really wanna use this cage, then there are mounting points on the bottom that are specifically designed to accept the DJI provided plate. Now, if you mount the DJI plate to the bottom of the cage, it will solve this problem, but it does raise your center of gravity up just a little bit. And, and it just seems kind of clunky to me. I don't really like that solution. The next cage in the gimbal category is not a cage at all. It's the small rig 3666 base plate. This plate is super minimal, but it packs a ton of features into its tiny size. First of all, it's marketed as being made for the Sony a7 IV, but I can confirm that it also fits the Sony a7S III. Sure, it's not as perfectly flush as on the a7 IV, but it's really, really close. The plate has an anti-twist pin and raised edges to keep it from coming loose. It has five quarter 20 threaded holes on the bottom, along with a cold shoe mount, a magnetic tool holder, a strap slot, and a nice leather inlay, which looks and feels very close to the grip material on the a7 IV or a7S III. It has the same little swing out door to allow the camera's battery door to fully swing out. And most importantly, this too is Arca Swiss and DJI compatible right out of the box. It does have the same limitations as the last small rig cage that we looked at, where you have to remove this plate from the gimbal before installing the camera, but it is very light. It's about a one third the weight of the full cage. It's super clean looking. I mean, when you look at this, it looks like it could have come from Sony like this, which is what I really like, and it's super low profile. The final cage in the gimbal category is the small rig 3639 half cage. For anyone who's confused about the need for a half cage, you're not alone. When these first started to become a thing, I was like, why would I ever need a half cage? Why wouldn't I just buy a full cage? But when I sat down and really thought about it as a gimbal user, it started to make way more sense. Because this cage is only a half cage, it weighs 40% less than its full cage brother. And two, and this is a big one, because it doesn't have that grip area blocking it, this cage can actually be installed on the gimbal without removing this plate. So check it out. On, off, that's it. That is a game changer right there because now I can go from my gimbal to my tripod and back and forth without having to rebalance the gimbal, which is a huge time saver for anyone who knows. It sucks having to rebalance your gimbal out in the field. So that is amazing. And although this is a half cage, it still has most of the important features that the full cage included, like the top 3 8 RE mounting hole, the cold shoe, plenty of quarter 20 threaded holes, a NATO rail, and the magnetic tool mount. All right, moving on to the locked off category. If you shoot mostly locked off, I think any of the half or full cages that we talked about so far will work for you. I think it all depends on what kind of accessories you wanna to bolt to your cage. They are all Arca Swiss compatible, so you shouldn't have a problem finding a tripod to work with any of these cages. Last but not least, photography. In my opinion, if you're purely a photographer, there's really only one choice, and that's the small rig 3666 base plate. Of course, you could use any of the cages that we talked about today for photography, but why would you wanna carry around all the extra weight if you don't have to? All right, so you guys are probably wondering what I use most. So for my A7S III, I do a lot of gimbal work, so the choice was pretty obvious. I went with the small rig 3639 half cage because the fact that I can take that cage, install it on my gimbal without having to remove any plates, and then take that and put it on my tripod seamlessly without having to rebalance anything was key. So it was a no brainer. I used the half cage on my A7S III 95% of the time. If I need to rig the camera out a little more and I need more mounting options, then I'll use the small rig 3667 full cage instead. The decision with my a7 IV wasn't as black and white. If I'm going out on a more video-centric shoot with the a7 IV, I'll opt for either the small rig or the Ulanzi full cage options. That way, I have more options for accessorizing it for run-and-gun style shooting, and they both work for locked-off shots on a tripod. 
Here's an example of what a typical run and gun setup would look like for me. A Ulanzi side handle, a Ulanzi monitor mount, and a small rig top handle. If I'm heading out for a day of photography, I'll almost always reach for the small rig 3666 base plate first. It's discreet, lightweight, super comfortable, and it works with all of my tripods. And it's really nice to know that if in a pinch, I could use it with my gimbal or I can attach a shotgun mic to its cold shoe mount. But if I'm going out to shoot some photography and I wanna grab some behind the scenes footage, I'll opt to use one of the full cage options so that way I can mount my Insta360 ONE X2 to the cage. If you guys wanna see what the footage looks like with an Insta360 mounted to my camera, go check out this video and I'll link it down in the description below. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. As you can see, there's not really one cage to rule them all, at least not for me. I'll be sure to leave links to all the products that we talked about today down in the description below. Um, I do wanna say that this video was not sponsored by Small Rig or Ulanzi. Ulanzi did send me the cage, the side handle, and the monitor mount, but no money changed hands and I'm definitely not obligated to give them a positive review. I know cages aren't the most exciting thing, so if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.